everyone throwing on their lab coats. <laughs> so we are here, just two stops left on our Giving Tuesday journey through BTI. And we have made our way down to the first level of BTI, where we are in the Jander Lab. And we're going to learn all about the work they're doing here. Um, so I will allow my uh, esteemed uh, guy to introduce himself because he's going to do it better justice than I will. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Kaysen. Hi, guys. My name is Melkamu. I am a postdoctoral scientist in the Janda Lab. I will tell you a little bit about what we do in the Janda Lab and then eventually introduce you with uh, most of the scientists working here. Uh, majorly, we are interested in studying plant insect interactions in the Janda Lab and plant pathogen interactions. And as you can imagine, plants in their natural environment are exposed to a huge variety of uh, insect herbivores and uh, scores of pathogens, and they must have a way of defending themselves. And in the Janda Lab, we are trying to study the chemical and biochemical basis of plant defense responses. And uh, as you can imagine, there is a huge diversity again in the, in, the, in the kinds of chemical defense responses in plants. And to identify novel chemical compounds and novel genes involved in the biosynthesis of these novel chemicals, we use genetic uh, variation that is available in the natural population. And using the genetic variation naturally available, we end up identifying novel compounds and possibly the biosynthetic pathways responsible for producing these novel compounds. These works uh, do have huge implications, agronomically speaking, and as we tour through the lab, we'll get the chance to listen to many of our brilliant scientists about what we do, and I hope it gives you a bird's eye view of our contribution to the BTI community. So if you could uh, come up with me, I will introduce you to right. some of our lab members. Hi. <laughs> Uh, I'm Hassan, and I'm a visiting scholar in the Jandal lab. Uh, and right recently, I'm working on the finding out the target genes uh, against the past to to make a construct for RNA isolating. So recently, like uh, I have been like doing like more than two or three cons uh, three targets against uh, uh, aphids and some other pests that are very prone to the crops in USA and other regions in the south. south. So what we do like uh, in the start we used to do to to get a construct where is it working or not we usually do with the artificial diet. So we make for, for like uh, we put, like amplify the gene, put it into the artificial diet and then you know through the QPCR and all other like uh, northern northern dark water to uh, to check either the silencing has been occurred into the respective uh, insects or not. So, yeah, that's what I'm doing. So, yeah. All right. Thanks so much. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and then see the next uh, scientist that we have. Her name is Annette <laughs> Hi. Hi. Yeah, my name is Annette, and I'm a postdoc here in Gender's lab, and um, I just started a few months ago and working on maize and defense against different herbivores. So there are different projects. One is um, working, um, so I'm working on aphids. And here you can see one experiment. It's a bulldog experiment. So I have different mutant lines. So these are corn maize aphids. Maybe I can show it. Yeah, okay. please. <laughs> and um, they're six days old, like that. And the experiment is that you put blue light on one side. You it's in the dark. I'm just demonstrating it here. And, <laughs> and then the shoot um, is uh, showing a curvature towards the blue light. And this is because of a plant hormone, auxin, because auxin is moving to the um, other side where there's no light. And this um, leads to an um, extension of the cells. And that's why the seedlings are growing towards the blue light. So, and I have here different mutant lines, and what I want to see is if there's a difference between um, different maze um, lines, if some of them are showing a different curvature after a few hours. <laughs> yeah. I'm also working on other projects. So, one you have shown. The last yes, time. <laughs> that's right. The, the tell us a little. Tell us a little bit. A little bit about the uh, the help me. 
yeah, so um, Corn is producing some water tides, what um, wasps can smell, and um, if caterpillars are feeding on the plants. And the wasps are attracted by those water tides, they can smell it, and then they put their eggs into the caterpillar, um, and then the larvae are feeding the caterpillars from the inside out so that the caterpillars <laughs> will die. That's pretty it's a cool. tough way to go. Yeah, and by the way, we can also smell it. So I can smell oh. that everyone. And um, when I induce those plants with caterpillars or an elicitor, um, to me it smells like if you open a can of um, maize, of oh. corn. So, but yeah, for other people it probably smells different. <laughs> <laughs> I like the smell, so yeah. Maybe I would also be attracted by the corn then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll try to keep the wasps yeah. away from you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks so much. Oh, we're swinging right back around here. Yeah. Rapid fire, I love it. Hi, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Pawan Kumar. I'm a postdoc scientist in uh, Gender Lab. I'm working on one of the favorite crop plants, maybe your favorite crop plants, potatoes. <laughs> uh, we are uh, interested in two questions, uh, applied aspects as well as a basic research on potato plants and its interactions with the uh, insects. Uh, we are using advanced molecular biology and uh, analytical chemistry tools to address these questions. But we are asking that our first question is how plant responds when uh, insect which feeds on the tubers in the below round uh, attack to the plant. So we are checking uh, metabolites, small molecules, which are induced in response to insect attack and also gene responsible for that. Our overall go goals are like to protect the plants from insects, to increase the tuber yield, and also increase the nutritional quality. So in one of the project, I'm increasing uh, methionine. It's an essential amino acid, which humans cannot produce, and humans are, uh, to get this amino acid, they are rely on the plants. So we are increasing this methionine in the tubers so that human can consume these potatoes by genetic engineering of the plants. And this methionine is also responsible for when you fry the potatoes, you get some typical aroma, mm -hmm. which is because of methionine. So if you want like more about our research, you can go to my webpage and thanks for watching. Bye. Awesome. Thanks so much. You're welcome. Good luck with the spuds. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> So uh, let me talk a little bit about the research that I'm involved in and uh, probably remind everybody that if you have questions anytime, please feel free to ask us or the researchers will be ready to answer. Um, I'll talk about one of my projects. Uh, I'm working on a couple of projects, one of which is trying to understand the defense responses of maize plants. Maize as one of a very important agronomic crop uh, is um, of high importance for this lab, we are involved in trying to understand the metabolic responses of maize plants to attack by caterpillars of different species. On my specific project, I'm studying Spodoptera exigua and how Spodoptera exigua uh, induces the metabolism of maize plants. And using the naturally available diverse population of maize plants, I tried to map and then identify the gene or genes responsible for the orchestration of defense responses and this is pretty novel and now we are winding up that story and trying to find additional novel elements which are involved in orchestrating maize defense responses now having said this about my project let me just take you to another uh, researcher uh, who would be talking about a completely different system um, for <laughs> Here we have um, Sarah. Hi. 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 So I am Sarah from Pakistan. I am a visiting scholar in Gender's Lab, and I am working on uh, plant pathogen interaction. So I'm basically I'm using the motor plant uh, for the silencing of some genes. Basically, what I, I am do I will use CRISPR Cas system. Uh, this is a very unique and very advanced uh, system for silencing or no knockout no, some genes of plants. So what am I, I am doing, uh, I am I want to silence some of the genes of uh, model plant uh, for uh, mm, silencing some, some genes so that white fly that is a uh, tiberci generally don't like uh, the plant because there are some genes that are resisting uh, white fly. So I am uh, screening for those genes 
which are acting as defense mechanism for women's state of SI. So, uh, using CRISPR, uh, briefly, using CRISPR gas system, I want to uh, make Nicotiana benthamiana as a model plant for, for Wi-Fi assay. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Great work. Thanks so much. All right. Um, okay. Why don't you meet Jing? Hi. Hi, my name is Jing. Hi, I'm Jing. I'm a doctor in Janus Lab, and I'm working on soybean and soybean and soybean aphid interactions. I'm trying to understand how the soybean responds to aphid infestation, and I was trying to identify aphid resistant genes are metabolized by a meta metabolic approach and the transcriptomic approach. Okay. Great, thanks. All right. Nobody All right. uses soybeans, right? Um, I think this is probably the first one in the industry, and she's the one working on soybean. Yeah. But I mean, in terms of like, and as a crop. Well, it is. Yeah, right? <laughs> it's pretty important. Exactly. Yeah, I think that tells you the importance of the work in general. So yeah. Soybean, maize, and potatoes. Right. And uh, Simon, that I will introduce you in a minute, will tell you one of the very important pests pathogen, rather, in maize. And I hope you. You know, get the chance to understand what we're doing right here. Simon, why don't you go ahead and then tell them what you do? Hey, uh, hi, Simon. Uh, so I'm from China and uh, originally, and I'm work on working on maize pathogen. So uh, mostly a fungus pathogen, so that infects all life cycles of maize. So uh, something starting from seedlings all the way to the stem of the corn and uh, to cob. So yeah, it's a big problem if they like corn. Or if you like beef, because they're feeding on corn. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah. So. Uh, Heard corn has a few uses. Right. So <laughs> yeah. So actually, most of the corn that you think of, uh, sweet corn, is only a very, very small portion of the corn that's being produced in this country. So most of most of the corn are used to produce, for example, high corn, uh, high fructose corn syrup. That's in your uh, Pepsi, and uh, they're also mostly to feeding cattle. So. If you like beef, you need to protect your car. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Simon. All right. Um, let's go ahead and see uh, Yandru here. Hi, Yandru. Hi. <laughs> right in the act. Yeah. That's what we call an action shot. <laughs> Hi, I'm Yandru. I'm from Taiwan. And so I'm trying to do a story right now. And this is my little pathway that I'm working on. Oh, oh dry thank erase. You for follow, following me all the way. So I'm working on polyamines, um, this biochemical pathway. And as you might already um, figure out, that our lab is focusing on plant defense against caterpillars, herbivores, and plant defense against pathogens. So what I'm working on is that I believe this pathway with all these arrows being complicated is playing a role between um, a gismonic acid and salicylic acid, both of a major defense pathway against um, pathogens, I'm sorry, pathogens and caterpillars. Um, it's playing a crosstalk between them and the plant is deciding by this pathway, which one it's going to turn on at the time and which is the more important one to defend at the time. So, yeah. That's great. People yeah. probably don't think that plants have to make such important exactly. decisions. Exactly. So for plants, nitrogen is always a limiting factor. And whenever you have a defense turning on, it needs a lot of protein, a lot of enzymes, and that will cause nitrogen sources. And so for plants, they try to um, make the most out of the nutrition they have. So they either have to uh, defense against um, herbivores turned on, or defense against pathogen. So it's kind of a trade off for plants to do. And yeah, I'm just trying to fit the polyamines biochemistry between how the plants is going to decide things. I guess we just hope they don't have to decide at the same time. Yeah, that's, true. that's actually a very interesting topic that we want to pursue in the future, how they deal with a three-way interaction yeah. as in a natural environment. Yeah, Great. Exactly. Well, thanks, and thanks for the, the sketch. That's <laughs> where we'll have to come you. back to get a photo of that. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> right. All right. Thank you very much, kids. Thank uh, you. I think if you have any questions that you would like uh, us to talk about, uh, we'd be very happy. Uh, answer those questions uh no i think uh i think that's pretty thorough thanks for being so organized we're able to just hop around to, to everybody i think this is by far the highest 
lab participation we've had. So uh, thanks for sharing all your work. Um, and we will uh, be back in about 12 minutes with uh, Paul Comet, who's going to talk to us about being on the ETI board and about the new mentorship program starting up here at BTI. And he will close out the show for the day. So thanks for hanging with us. And thanks, everyone, at the Jander Lab uh, for uh, – <laughs> bye bye. For being with us tonight. All right. Thank you very much. And uh, we just hope this this plant can make the right decision. Because I feel really bad just looking at that plant. I just hope hope that the right choice is made. Okay. We'll see you soon. <laughs>